Hello and welcome to Study IQ. I am your friend Rahul Saigaonkar. The agenda for discussion today is connected to agriculture. Under the domain of agriculture, we are going to specifically talk about fertilizer sector in India. The question is, why are we having this interaction? Because recently, TACP, the Commission on Agricultural Costs and Prices, has submitted its report to the central government for Kharif season 2023-24 where they have recommended to the central government to bring urea under the NBS regime, nutrient-based subsidy regime. In this video lecture, we are going to analyze this new snippet in totality. So, what are the things that we are going to understand? First, we are going to talk about TACP, the body which is attached to Ministry of Agriculture. We are also going to look at the report that they have submitted. One of the recommendations, you can see here, recommended to bring urea into NBS. So, in this lecture, we will understand what is this NBS also, nutrient-based subsidy, why urea was kept out of it, what has been the impact of keeping urea out of NBS regime, all these things would be understood. Then, we will talk about this recommendation. Apart from that, in the latter half, we are also going to talk about some other recommendations that TACP has made towards Indian agriculture. So, all in all, a very important discussion for all the UPSC civil services aspirants, both for prelims and mains. To get to know all this information, to understand all, all these things, stay with me till the very end. Let's begin. But before that, there is a small notice for all of you. You do know that Study IQ is running its flagship program, Prelims to Interview, and its first English batch is starting from 19th of June. So, keep a track of this, mark your calendar. The beginning of this batch is from 19th June. This is the most comprehensive program because we will be hand holding you throughout your journey from prelims to mains to interview. If you clear your preliminary examination 2024, you will be called for a mains residential program at the Study IQ Center. All the expenses of that would be taken care of by Study IQ. It is going to be a Gurukul kind of a setup where you will be focusing on answer writing for mains 2024. You will have mentors, you will have tutors, everybody with you for refining your answer writing. Mock interviews are also planned. Everything, the entire package is designed at an affordable price. If you want maximum discount, do use my code Rahul Life. Just visit our website studyiq.com. I'll see you in the class. Right, let's begin our discussion. As I told you, recently the CACB, Commission on Agricultural Costs and Prices, has submitted its report to the central government where they have given a big recommendation to bring urea under the NBS regime, nutrient-based subsidy regime. Now, this recommendation has come because the report was submitted in light of Kharif 2023-24 season. But just a few months back, central government had already told in the parliament that this year at least the government is not going to do it. The government is not going to bring urea under the NBS regime. It was already told. But despite that, the recommendation has come. So, let's understand and dissect this topic to get all the facets of that. First thing, what is this CACP? CACP stands for Commission on Agricultural Prices and Costs. It is a statutory body under Ministry of Agriculture. Although initially when it was set up way back in 1960s, it was called Agricultural Prices Commission when it was, it did not have any statutory status. But right now, it is a statutory body under the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. Please remember, it is just a recommendatory body and what do they recommend? They recommend agricultural price policy and relative price structure connected with agriculture. They submit the report to the central government but ultimately the decision would lie with the central government. Recently we had a discussion on MSP. All the decisions are eventually taken by CCEA. Since this talks about price policy, they also give you MSP, the MSP rates. But final numbers or final decision would lie with the government itself. So, TACP, it is attached with Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. It has four members. Right now, this is the composition. Chairman is Professor Vijay Paul Sharma. There are three other members you can see here. So, this is about CACP and I told you they have recommended that urea should be brought under the NBS scheme, the nutrient-based subsidy scheme. Now, what is this NBS? You will be listening about this repeatedly because there are some issues in Indian fertilizer sector, we know about that, right? In 2010, when there was UPA government, they brought the nutrient-based subsidy scheme. Its main aim was to ensure that there is balanced use of nitrogen, phosphorus and potash-based fertilizers in India. 
the scheme or the subsidy regime that has been brought here the subsidy is provided specifically for these nutrients nitrogen phosphorus potash sulfur etc on a basis of per kg which is directly given to the manufacturers please remember this only applies to complex fertilizers that are produced urea was not included in this urea is heavily subsidized in india again almost all the fertilizers subsidized in india but urea is heavily subsidized the objective again for this was to ensure that people get fertilizers at subsidized rates and also there is balanced use of these nutrients npk dap whatever it is right now the question is how exactly this works under the nutrient based subsidy if i am a manufacturer marketer importer then subsidy would be provided directly from the government to these companies on the basis of per kg nutrient that they have included in the fertilizer complex all right so this rate or the fertilizer subsidy rate it is decided by the government it is revised time and again on the basis of domestic and international cost it is it it takes into consideration the currency exchange the transportation the freight charges etc everything and based on that the subsidy is decided by the central government now under this scheme if you look at per kg nutrient based subsidy for npk and s since 2010 this is for 2010 to 2022 23 these are the numbers for nitrogen if you see per kg it has been continuously rising it is quite understandable because taking into consideration inflationary pressures the international prices etc the price per kg of subsidy is continuously increasing and the latest has been 98 rupees for last year rabi rabi 2022 98 rupees for nitrogen 66 rupees per kg for phosphate 23 rupees per kg for potash and you do know potash we do not have any reserves we import it completely 23 rupees per kg for potash and 6 rupees per kg for sulfur right how exactly this works say, imagine i am the manufacturer i am the manufacturer say i am ifco right i am a company which is manufacturing fertilizers and i am importing all these things say i am producing a fertilizer npk right nitrogen phosphorus potash and say this is 100 kg fertilizer and in this 100 kg fertilizer i have 50 50 kg of nitrogen i have 25 kg of phosphorus and 25 kg of potash so so what i'll be getting i'll be creating a wholesome price of this the cost of production say imagine it is x which would be quite high say imagine it to be around 3000 rupees per quintal i i have i have put in 3000 rupees to prepare this 100 kg what the government would do is they will tell these manufacturers companies to set it at at a reasonable rate at a subsidized rate and i will put the price at y say imagine this is hypothetical discussion the cost of production for me is about 3000 rupees and i set i set the price of this at 1500 rupees that means i have to get some sort of subsidy directly from the government and this subsidy is based on these complexes they will calculate how much is the subsidy and then they will disperse it to the company directly. Clear? That's the setup as of now. The NBS, the NBS uh, scheme or NBS strategy. In fact, this is continuing as of now also. Recently, just last month, the government has said the NBS is going to continue. And they have also said that a revision might come very soon. I showed you the rates here. The rates here. These rates are soon going to be changed because they will be revised in line with the market rates all right so this is the setup now who who implements this this scheme or the nutrient based subsidy is directly sent to the manufacturers to the companies from the ministry of chemicals there is a department of fertilizers ministry of chemicals and fertilizers under that department of fertilizers specifically there is a fertilizer subsidy division under this department and what they will do they will directly send they will directly send everything the payment subsidy payment is done directly to the companies on the basis of actual sales that they have made to the retailers now you know if you want fertilizer then at the pos machine you will go in the authorized center you will give your farmers id etc so the the amount of bags etc the sales is known on the basis of that directly trans money is transferred to the companies that's how the nbs scheme as of now works please remember urea is not included in this what happens with urea is urea its price is completely controlled controlled by whom it is controlled by the government 
for urea the subsidy the rate is fixed and subsidy is directly sent to the to the companies it's not based on the nutrients urea is a nitrogen based nitrogen based fertilizer and it is not under the nbs scheme so what is happening because of this what is happening because of the nbs regime as of now these are the rates i would say from 2019 these rates are applicable if you look at the rates how much is the subsidized rate for urea look at this urea for a 45 kg bag it costs about 266 if you look at the current rate for 46 kg it costs about 280 rupees all right and this is heavily subsidized this price is controlled fixed by the government and about these prices about these complexes other fertilizers like the npk dap etc the prices of these are fixed at a reasonable rate if you look at this 50 kg bag for 1440 50 kg bag for approximately uh, from 1200 to 1500 range these complexes are set and over this the companies will get nutrient based subsidy the amount if you see here npk 2 12 32 36 that means uh, in 50 kg bag according to the proportion of this npk the subsidy would be sent on the amount of sales that have been made so what is going to happen the impact of nbs is that you will see the complexes that are already present here look at the rate of npk look at the rate of npk 2 np dap all these things they are more than 1000 i told you they are in the range of 1200 rupees to 1500 rupees and the cost of urea bag 45 kg urea bag is about 270 rupees if i am a farmer what would i go for right now is it is a kharif sowing time and whenever i sow right, when i go for sowing i sow the seeds along with seeds i also sow the urea so that the uh, rate of germination the rate of growing of crop is high the productivity would be high that's why i would opt for urea and because of this urea meaning because of use of extensive urea nitrogen the amount of nitrogen in soil is continuously increasing this has been a huge impact and we have seen the ideal ratio for NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus and potash, it should be 4 is to 2 is to 1. But in India, because of the subsidized urea rates, it is as high as 8 is to 3 is to 1. And in some states, it is extensive. If you look at state-wise ratio of NPK, in states like Punjab, it is extremely high, 33 N, 8 P and 1 K. All right. So, it is heavily skewed towards urea means heavily skewed towards the nitrogen so what happens because of this first of all the continuous cost of subsidy increases the cost of urea subsidy it increases because urea is used extensively in fact the government has announced that for kharif season this kharif season which is going to begin very very soon 23 24 the government has already approved 1.08 lakh crores fertilizer subsidy which would be dispersed to the companies out of this 70000 crore it goes towards subsidizing urea and about 38 crore 38000 crore it goes towards subsidizing the other fertilizer complex still urea is being used extensively even this year it is going to be used extensively all right now extensive use of urea it also leads to many problems first of all since urea is heavily heavily subsidized people use more and more urea and there is also a lot of black marketing of this fertilizers. You will, you will find Indian fertilizers even in some neighboring countries. Right? Some sort of black marketing does happen. Apart from that, nitrogen pollution does take place. Because of nitrogen pollution, environmental effects happen. Blue baby syndrome is one of the problems. right? So, nitrogen pollution will occur. Now, to stop this overuse of urea in India, that is why the CACP right now, this is the report which the CACP has submitted. It is about 330 page report. You don't need to refer that per se, but I'm talking about the important recommendation here already. They have called for rationalizing fertilizer pricing and subsidy. Now look at this recommendation. They have said that urea must be brought under the nutrient based subsidy regime so that the subsidy burden for the government, it reduces. Apart from that, they have also said, see here, urea should be brought under the NBS regime 1. Then they have also said that the government has to set a cap, very similar to how we have LPG cylinders, the subsidized LPG cylinders. Every year, only 12 subsidized cylinders are allowed per family. You know that, right? Now, the CACP is telling that very similar to the LPG cylinders, 
the urea bags you so fertilizers fertilizer bags they have to be capped every farmer apart from that they say that it can be implemented although it is a very uh, radical it would be a very radical kind of a change but the cap csep said it can be implemented very easily since already the sale of fertilizers subsidized fertilizers it occurs through point of sale devices farmer have to, have to provide the kcc aadhar card etc voter id and based on this we can identify and very easily bring urea under the nbs scheme that's the recommendation will the government do it or not we'll talk about that later but you will be thinking now for sure sir you said the nbs scheme it came in 2010 and since 2010 it is running so the question is why the government has not brought urea till now under the nbs why the rate of urea is extremely low urea rate is extremely low and other fertilizers their prices are high why why the government has still not done it because in 2012 itself a committee headed by sharad pawar it had also recommended to bring urea under the nbs regime it has not been done although government does talk about this there is mulling which is going on over this but the indian government might bring urea under nbs in future because couple of months back itself the central government has categorically told that there is no plan as of now to bring urea under the nutrient based subsidy regime the setup that is right now going on it is going to continue but maybe in future things might change and for this to happen there has to be a study on soil health and the size of holding because we know in india small and marginal farmers their number is very high and for them subsidized fertilizers they will be of great great help and that is why before bringing these kind of changes the government is still thinking over that and you do know that the ultimate idea by the government is to ensure that the fertilizer subsidy itself can be directly given to the farmers that would be some kind of an ideal solution why because right now what happens is government it gives subsidy to the companies that means the market prices of fertilizers are controlled you can see even for the fertilizer complexes like npa npk dap etc for that the government it asks the companies to keep the prices at a reasonable level and the subsidy is given for urea it is completely controlled if these rates are based on the market what would happen if i am a farmer if everything is is running on market imagine what is going to happen the cost of 45 kg bag of urea on the basis of cost of production would be approximately around 2500 rupees right now i get it at 270 rupees etc 270 odd rupees so imagine i have to shell out 2500 rupees per bag and then the government would be giving back that subsidy into my account there is long time for that but the ideal solution or the ultimate idea is that this itself that all the rates would be brought to the market and then subsidy can be directly given to the farmers that have been identified but that is going to take a lot of time even the recommendation that cscp gave this is not going to happen this year so let's wait and watch how the government will rationalize the fertilizer sector but let's end our discussion by looking at some other recommendations that the cscp gave which you can use in your answer writing one of the important recommendations is to promote shri anna that means the millets and cereals they have to be promoted according to cacp you do know this is the year of international international year for the millets and that is why millets have to be promoted you do know in terms of procurement in terms of production indian food grain production is heavily skewed towards wheat and rice of course these are our staple foods but focus on shri anna or millets is also said by cacp apart from that focus should be made on pulses and oil seeds to reduce our imports this has been recommended by the cacp in this year's harif report apart from this they have also highlighted that india needs to improve its productivity it's quite understandable because we are almost at the saturation in terms of the land usage we cannot we cannot expand the land whatever land is available with india we are using that for agriculture we cannot increase the amount of land so what we have to do whatever land we have we have to produce more in it for that improve productivity by using best practices by ensuring integrated crop management by including technology apart from that they have also recommended that access to agricultural credit should be improved especially 
in the rural areas there is a lot of regional disparity in terms of availability of agricultural credit in india cacp has also recommended for broadening the coverage of crop insurance we know in india pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana is right now active cacp has recommended to spread this particular scheme more and more create awareness about this scheme by using print and electronic media and more and more farmers have to be brought under pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana that's another recommendation apart from that accelerate farm mechanization in india still we are way behind in terms of mechanization the cacp has recommended that we need to strengthen the submission on agricultural mechanization provide provide uh, mechanized equipments to the farmers mechanized sowers harvesters combined harvesters etc apart from that market intelligence and outlook system should be created this is a very good recommendation you can use it in your answer writing cacp has recommended that on the basis of artificial intelligence big data analytics machine learning india needs to create some sort of some sort of a, a system or a mechanism where we where we enhance our market intelligence anticipate what what is going to happen to the prices farmers will be uh, will be very much benefited by this if they are able to forecast the prices and hold on to their food grains selling at correct time bring market reforms apart from that investment in agricultural r and d and innovation has to be done more and more investment has to be done this has been uh, recommended by the cacp they have also recommended for strengthening procurement operations from northeastern india as of now the procurement by the government on the msp rates it happens mostly mostly from the northern indian states the fci procures more and more from say punjab haryana uttar pradesh so here the cacp has recommended to strengthen the procurement operations from northeastern region so that farmers from ner they will be benefited apart from that the government has the cacp has also called the government to create awareness about the minimum support prices and the quality standards so that farmers income can be enhanced more and more and finally they have also recommended india to bring a dynamic trade policy right now india has emerged as one of the prime agricultural producers we export a lot of fruit grains a lot of equipments so a dynamic trade policy has to be created or a dynamic trade policy has to be followed by india to ensure that there is enhanced productivity and better trade relation with other countries also to enhance the income of our farmers so these are some of the important recommendations by cacp please make a note of these because you can use them in your answer writing in gs paper 3 so let's wait and watch if there will be any update on the nbs regime will urea be brought under that we'll keep an eye on that whenever it happens we'll have a discussion on study iq for sure that is it right now in this particular discussion thank you for watching this and if you like this video you can always follow me on this particular id at the rate rahul sai 222 thank you for watching this video again jai hind